Our other speaker tonight is Steve Dominguez. And so he's going to be talking about how to select lighting fixtures. And what I do is I'm a lighting manufacturer representative. So I represent about 50 different lighting manufacturers. And for, for a geographical territory, I sell our product uh, in the territory. And obviously, Ann is uh, one of my customers, clients that I call on. And um, so uh, my job is, uh, and, and by the way, I, I want to mention that uh, what a privilege you guys had uh, having Ann speak uh, with you guys today because um, I don't know if you know this or not, but Ann is probably one of the premier lighting de designers in the country. And I was very in, involved in that discussion. It was a great discussion uh, or a great uh, uh, instruction by her. It was almost like being, you know, given golf lessons by Tiger Woods, uh, you know. So uh, I, it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's probably a bad. An <laughs> Phil Mickelson, how about that? That's probably a better analogy. Uh, and then my second uh, golf analogy is. Uh, to kind of describe what I do, uh, I, I sometimes call myself a lighting caddy, right? I mean, everybody knows what a caddy does. They, they carry a golf bag around and, you know, kind of make suggestions as far as uh, what club to hit. And, uh, you know, we, we, we say, oh, well, the wind's blowing this way. And, uh, you know, you want to use the, the seven iron here. And, uh, you know, you let the professional do the work, right? You give them the club and let the professional hit the shot and you're, you're just kind of the guy in the background that you know makes the good suggestions hopefully so you know sometimes when I call on Ann uh, you know the, the club that I'm giving her happens to be you know you're hitting in the sand and you got to hit over water and the wind is blowing in your face and this is a really difficult shot you know because uh, she's very particular about w what she asks for very detailed and so what I have to do is go back to my my bag of tricks or my golf bag and find out the best solution for her application because if I get it wrong uh, it, it's not gonna look good on her either so um, what I what I want to do is uh, today is just kind of show you uh, what kind of products we sell and what kind of light sources we deal with on a regular basis so um, I brought a bunch of lamps up here and you know one of the things that is should be probably uh, told is is that a lamp source really we design a light fixture around a light source right so what comes first the chicken or the egg well the, the light source comes first and then the manufacturers design around the light source so um, this happens to be a compact fluorescent lamp and uh, fluorescent is, is a great source. It's very energy efficient. Uh, it comes in different color temperatures and it, it has a high efficacy. So, you, you know, some of these terms that you'll need to know, high efficacy, what does that mean? Uh, you know, it, it means lumens per watt, which means how much light does it per, put out based on the wattage of the lamp source. So it's like miles per gallon of your car uh, you want to know how much light this, this lamp puts out because when you're designing a space, you don't want to overlight the space. You don't want to have too much light on an object or too much light on the wall. You want to make sure it's the right amount of light. And just getting there, uh, you need to know, be knowledgeable about the lamp sources that are available to you today. So this is, you know, we're at a very interesting time in the lighting industry is because you guys have all heard the term LED, right? And, and LED is really taking over our business. And it's becoming more and more prevalent in our marketplace uh, and in the state of California because it's an extremely efficacious lamp source. It's very, very energy efficient. And so uh, as time goes on, um, a lot of these lamps that I have up here are going to be put by the wayside and we're going to start using more and more LED sources uh, in our business. So um, do all you can to learn about LED. I'm going to show you most of the product here I have is LED. Uh, but before I get into that, I, I just want to keep kind of rolling through some of the lamp sources here. So fluorescent, compact fluorescent, 
uh, comes in different color temperatures. Color temperature is important, right? Lamp sources, you don't want to have a lamp source that puts out kind of a bluish green light uh, when you're doing an interior space that has very warm finishes. You want to make sure that the light source that's coming out of the fixture complements the finishes that you're designing in the space. So with uh, fluorescent lamps, uh, you can get them in a very warm color temperature uh, to a very cool color temperature. Does, does that mean anything to you? So when I say warm color temperature, I'm talking about a light source that emits a very uh, brown, orange, red color tones. When I say cool color temperature, it emits a very green, blue, uh, very cold color temperature. So um, I'm going to point that out uh, on the lamp source that's available with that color, with those uh, types of options. So this is, you know, obviously a round fluorescent lamp. We would use it in maybe a circular fixture. What we want to do when we're lighting, when we're lighting uh, or using light sources in fixtures is that we don't want to see imaging of the lamp. We want it to be very uniform. You saw in some, a lot of those photos, Anne used these big round drum fixtures. How horrible would it be to have a bunch of point sources sticking out, shining through that fixture? It wouldn't look very good. It'd take away from the architecture, draw your eye right to the light source. So we use lamps like this to cater to the design of the fixture. I was slapped on the hand early on in my, in, in my life in saying, this is not a light bulb, this is a lamp, okay? And then anything that I'm talking about that's equipment is a light fixture. So uh, anytime I'm referring to lamp, it's, I'm talking about the source itself and then fixture is the product that the lamp is inside of. Make sense? Okay. Everybody knows what this is. This is an A-lamp incandescent dying breed. It's going to go away. Uh, we're going to replace it with something like this, which is an LED light source. So this, for instance, puts, this puts out 60 watts. This puts out 5 watts. I change them out in my house. It's indistinguishable, the difference in light output. So we're, we're a very energy conscious state. We're going to be a very energy conscious country. Uh, you're going to see a lot of change to more energy efficient light sources. Uh, the industry standard for this is 50,000 hours. So in a house, that's probably 30 years. In a commercial residence, that's probably 15 years. So the bad thing is, is that a lot of the product that I'm specifying or showing that I'll probably be retired by the time it's time to change it out, right? So I mean, we're, in, we're putting in a uh, product that is um, sustainable and it's going to last a very long time. Uh, you know, that's what the LED source is, is known for, energy efficiency and longevity. Anybody know what this is? It's called an MR16. It stands for micro reflector, meaning it has a reflector behind the lamps, behind the, the filament. And it's six, the 16, and usually the number within a lamp source refers to the number of eighths of an inch in diameter, or it has to do with the size of the lamp. So when I hear MR16, and I hear the 16, I say it's two inches in diameter. So the product that I'm putting it in should be a very small source, whether it's a downlight or a wall sconce or a pendant. So this product has been used in our industry for a very long time. It's a great source because it has a very white, crisp light that comes out of it. But the downside to it is it's very, it consumes a lot of energy. This is 50 watts of light coming out of this light source. That fixture right there, is producing 37 watts of light. So you can imagine how much light is coming out of this and how much heat comes out of it. It's a great lamp source because you can specify, when I say MR, the micro reflector, you can get it in different distributions. So when Ann was showing you that picture of, a, of the, the vase on the table and she was highlighting it, did she probably did it with a very narrow beam of light coming out of a, fixed, a lamp source like this. 
So it was coming out of the ceiling and all she was doing was just lighting right around that vase with an MR16 like this with a very n narrow distribution. Now we can do this also in a wider distribution and if you were doing general lighting you would use a wider, you know, so let's say a corridor for instance, you would probably use a wider beam angle out of the lamp to get more uniformity of light. It, it has to do with the way the facets of the way the light comes out of the lamp source. Has, the, the shape is always going to stay the same, but inside of here there's reflectors. You can pass that around. There's reflectors in there, and the way they articulate them is how the light comes out of the inside. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So if that was up in the ceiling, there would only be two inches of light coming down to like here. Is that two? Well, no, I'd be so it would it would go at an angle like oh, that. Okay. So they come in uh, 12 degree, I'm in a 15 degree ish range, and that'd probably be the narrowest angle of light. And they go all the way to 65 degree. So we would say that's a wide flood, or on the other end of the spectrum, a narrow spot. Right? So that's, you know, depending on what you're lighting, depends on what angle of beam distribution you get out of those sources. Does that make sense? Now we couldn't do anything like that with this lamp, right? It doesn't have that ability. This thing just throws up light everywhere. That's the purpose of it. <clears throat> Don't ever specify this lamp inside. <laughs> this is a uh, 150 watt uh, metal halide lamp. So I'm only bringing this in just so you can familiarize yourself with it, but it's, it's what we call HID. It's a high intensity discharge lamp. Uh, it puts out a lot of light. It's usually used in parking lots or very, very high ceilings in an older building, right? We, we rarely use this lamp source anymore. Um, it had its day, but uh, these days it's probably gonna get replaced with the LED source. Any parking lot you go to, big box parking lot, uh, a church that has very high ceilings, very old space, it's going to have these. The big problem with these lamp sources when you use them interior, in an interior space is that when they first turn on, they don't come on to full brightness. They actually warm up and they take a lot of time to get to the full output and then, then you have light. And then if somebody accidentally hits the switch on the wall, the light shuts off and you got to wait for it to cool down and warm back up. So it's very problematic. It's it's energy efficient, but there are more energy efficient sources that are on the market. Okay, you want to light your parking lot with this, and there's people that will, and it's cheaper, right? Yeah, the, the, the product cost, the initial cost, is cheaper, right? But if I'm lighting a parking lot with 150 watt metal halide, which actually consumes about 175 watts of energy, okay? I don't want to get too deep into this, but the point is, is that I can probably do the same level of light, sufficient level of light, with a 70 watt uh, LED source. So you save, if you look at it from a long term uh, total life cycle cost is what we, we like to make sure they understand is that, sure, initially you're going to pay, you know, $10,000 for your, your HID source, metal halide source, and you're going to pay $15,000 for your LED application. But over the long life of these fixtures, you're never going to have to change the lamp out or for a very long time. So that cost that goes away. And your energy cost is going to go way down because you're cutting half the light by using an LED source. So, half the or half the energy, not half the light. Um, so ultimately, it's a win for the owner if they can understand life cycle cost. And that's what we have to uh, really promote to, to the clients that we're selling the product to. Okay? So, with that, um, we've talked about uh, halogen sources. That's the MR16 lamp that's going around. We've talked about fluorescent sources. And we've talked about incandescent sources. And we've talked about HID sources. Okay? What we haven't talked about is an LED source, or at least seen an LED source, and so 
What I'm showing here is, could you kill those lights? Makes a much better display when the lights are off. So this is 20 watts of LED downlight in a very warm color temperature. So what, what you notice is it, it's very evenly illuminated. The color temperature is nice. You know, one of the things that Ann talked about is what does the light look like on the person, right? We want it to make sure it brings out the color of our skin properly. We don't want it to shadow our faces. We want to make sure it's nice, even illumination. And that's what we do. And this is a downlight, right? So when we say the term downlight, the, the light's going straight down, okay? And we're just general light illumination with this fixture. So what else did Ann talk about? She talked about adjustable or accent lighting. And so we can do, with a product like this, We can do adjustable accent lighting so that turn it this way. And this source will tilt. And so you know you could create more of a shadow line on, on the wall, give you more of a scalloped effect. And that's what we're doing, that's what we're talking about when we're doing accent lighting. So when you're specifying a product like this, you want to make sure that, number one, it's giving you the amount of light that you, giving you the, the, the level of light that you want. It's doing, giving you the proper distribution that you want on the wall. And the color temperature is the right color temperature for the application. Sorry. So this is this is what we call the wall washing optic, right? So we're hitting the wall evenly. We're not creating that shadow line, that hard shadow on the wall. We're giving it nice even illumination across the face of the wall. And you know, like Ann pointed out in that picture where the, the line came down below the ceiling line, um, you know, we don't want that to happen in the field. We want to make sure that that we size these and space these appropriately so that we get nice even shadowing across the face of the wall. And then just to show you uh, one other thing is that LEDs are love to be dimmed and they do a very nice job of, of evenly dimming. What you don't want to happen when you're dimming a light fixture is it to have it step so you see those, those steps in the dim this, this particular fixture has a, does a very nice job of even illumination. It's really hard to tell that this is an LED light source in here. It feels very incandescent. This is a downlight. So yeah, this, I, I was showing it to you that way so you could see okay, so you the distribution. Right, so it would be mounted in the ceiling, shining down, or you know, pointed at the wall, or tilted towards the wall. So in this particular product, we offer it as a downlight, an, ad an adjustable accent or a wall wash. So you would specify it with the wall wash part number and then along as you're specifying you have to specify the wattage that you want, you have to specify the color temperature that you want, you have to specify something that we call uh, CRI which is color rendering index which, which basically tells you how true the color is underneath the light source. Some, some do it better than others so you specify that, obviously the voltage, and then the dimmability of it or the color of the trim. You know, those are all things that, that you need to be cognizant of when, when you're specifying. So all f just about all fluorescent lamps can dim. The only thing that needs to be uh, specified is if you want a dimming ballast in the fixture or if you don't want a dimming ballast in the fixture. And, and there's a, usually a about a hundred dollar cost to go to fluorescent dimming. So if I was specifying this light with a fluorescent source, for the most part you would have um, a lot of the same you know componentry, light output, but it would be a big adder to go to a fluorescent lamp 
or fluorescent dimming ballast in the adder, cost adder to go to to get dimming in this fixture. With LED, it, it's a standard cost. So, as a salesman, what I try to tell people or ask people is, okay, so you want you want this fixture and you want it in fluorescent light output, right? But you want to dim the fixtures. So, say this fixture costs two hundred dollars to get a fluorescent ballast in there it's another hundred dollars so that's three hundred dollars just to get a fluorescent light that's dimmable with LED it's two hundred and eighty dollars you get the dimming already built into it and you get better quality of light more energy efficient and it lasts twice as long, and it lasts twice as long. so that I mean a lot of these things that we're hitting on are issues why our world is changing so quick for, for, to, to LED sources. Almost everything that we're specifying these, I shouldn't say almost everything, 40%? I, I mean, our largest manufacturer that we represent uh, told us two years ago, the conversion rate to LED by 2015 will be 50%. And they say they're blowing that away as we speak. It, it's by 2015, it'll be greater than 50% conversion rate to LED product. So it's very, uh, it's very hard to, I mean, to, to even show these light sources anymore, it, it's almost, these are almost outdated product, you know, because our world is all about LED these days. And when, as we, as every, as you all get into the industry, it's going to get even better. LEDs, if you notice the back of this, has a heat sink and if you touch it it's it's warm to the touch but on this side there is no UV coming out of an LED source so out of here it's cool to the touch because we use electron electronics is how you produce the light of an LED it's light emitting diode so it's a source of, it's electronic sources that are producing the light so there's no heat coming out of this side but there's a lot of heat coming out of this side. And the challenge with the lighting manufacturers is to pull enough heat away from the, the chip to make sure their product runs effectively and energy, efficient, energy efficiently and gives it the lifespan that you want. If you have a product that doesn't dissipate the heat properly, it's going to have a shorter lamp life and it's not going to perform to the optimal level that you want. So. Um, that, and then uh, the other thing is if you take an LED source and you cram it into an existing fixture, it's not always a great idea because that fixture wasn't designed to pull away the heat properly. So point being is you probably want to look at a, a platform, a, a, a fixture that has an LED platform, you know, directly from the factory. You know, 80% of the homes have, newer homes have a six inch ring or a downlight, six inch downlight. And there is a ton of product on the market these days. I mean, you can go to, to Home Depot, I wouldn't recommend it, but you can go to Home Depot and they have kits that you can pull out the, the lamp that kind of looks like this and you screw in a socket adapter and you snap up inside of that fixture a LED source. I've done it in my house and uh, it's, you know, where I did it was outside on my patio going out the front door because I like to leave the lights on all night long. And when I replaced the three 60 watt lamps that were there, I replaced it with three LED sources that produce less energy than one 60 watt lamp that was there originally. So, and it's gonna last forever. So they don't make lamps or they still make light these sources like that in LED that you can just uh, touch them out. They do. So it looks like this. So this is an LED, uh, and this happens to be a this is a par 38. So it's 38. It's actually millimeters, I think, is how they rate this one, but. Uh, and this is a par 30, so it's a little bit smaller in diameter, but this is what you could retrofit out. Uh, for instance, track. We do a lot of, we have a lot of opportunities where a retail store that has a ton of track 
fixtures like this producing 100 watts or 90 watts of light and we come in and put 50, 15 watts of light in it and it does a, a equal job of light output and gives you a very nice clean beam of, of light and it lasts 50,000. Do you have to have a converter? No, not this one. No, oh, so you can buy those to where you don't This have screws right into an incandescent socket. Well, the, the converter was, um, so basically what it looks like is a pot light, a down light, right? And you have to have something that snaps up into the existing housing. And so there's a cord that comes off of there that has this on there, because that's the only way we can get power to that source. And so we screw it into the socket, and that's what energizes our kit. And then you snap it up inside of the, the down light. There are a lot of recessed down lights where you can just, you can buy an LED version of that PAR lamp, well, of an R lamp, and I, I just screw them straight into my... Exactly. And, and these, it, these have been tested to go inside of an existing housing. This is the one you're talking about that you use? That's a high performance oh, okay. lamp that Steve's holding up, and, um, you know, he's holding up a PAR lamp, which is, has a more narrow beam, and it throws a lot more concentrated light within its beam. There's also R lamps, which are much softer. Okay. And the R lamps and the LEDs versus halogen, they almost look identical, and the performance is identical. So they're R called lamp. R lamps, huh? They're, 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 yeah, Steve can yeah, they're, more, uh, more, more hours about that. Yeah, I mean, R stands for reflector lamp. Okay. PAR stands for parabolic aluminized reflector, which is this here. So there's more performance out of this product than, than say an R lamp. So one other, one other thing that I wanted to point out to, on this product is much like the uh, MR16 where we had or, or some of these other lamp sources where we had different distributions with the reflector that was built into the lamp source um, this particular product you also have reflectors that you could change out to change the distribution angle of the the light output of, of the fixture. So one other, uh, Ann talked about uh, uh, general lighting or uh, fill lighting and you know we, there, we spent a lot of time uh, with residential applications and we spent a lot of time uh, talking about retail applications but uh, another big part of our business is commercial lighting and um, where we do a lot of, uh, you know we have a lot of clientele that that do uh, schools, libraries, um, uh, open office areas, small office areas where people sit for long periods of time and you know eight hours a day and they work under uh, you know light source that needs to be comfortable right we don't want to work under something like this eight hours a day because what happens is when we're looking at a task on the desk and then we're looking at a computer screen and then we're looking at something over here that's vertical our uh, illumination changes within that space and so our eyes have to adjust and readjust to what the task is that that we're doing at a desk it's a very you know very dynamic spaces where you're sitting for long periods of time require different types of lighting and we do it uh, two different ways uh, we do it in, in a pendant form so this is uh, what we call an indirect fixture and what we're doing here is we're bouncing we're using the ceiling as our reflector and we're punching out a lot of light out of this fixture and we're uniformly lighting the space and so if I look into the space from where I'm standing I see a, an, an even illumination on the desktops and the, the faces that are standing in front of me and so what that means is, is we, we create a space that's very, from an architectural standpoint, it's, I don't want this to drop again. So from, the, from an architectural standpoint, there's not a whole lot of shadows. It's very two-dimensional. The walls are illuminated the same as the desk, but it's a very easy place for you to work in because all the light levels are the same in the space. They're very even and uh, your computer screens don't have images of, of light on it. It's just very soft, even 
approach. This particular product has very little downlight to it. So it's about 90% light up and about 10% light down. And it's a very typical approach for classrooms, um, large open office, you know, bullpen areas where we have a lot of vertical partitions. Uh, are, are, it's, and, it's, and it can be a very energy efficient way to light a space as well because a product like this has the ability to really push light laterally and that gives us the ability to spread the fixtures far. This product is fluorescent, yes. Uh, LED has not quite got the horsepower yet to be cost effective enough and uh, light output high enough to be able, well we could probably do it light output wise but we'd have a huge heat sink you know hanging off the fixture and it just wouldn't look right in the space. So we start at about, you probably don't want to be any higher than 18 inches away from the ceiling. You need to have about an 18 inch gap between your reflective source and the bottom of the fixture. So we start, you know, so if you had a space that was uh, a lower ceiling height, nine foot, nine foot six, you, you know, we usually start to go to an indirect fixture or a pendant hung fixture in those ceiling height, nine, six, 10 foot. Cause you, what you don't want to have is this feeling of, you know, light hanging over your head. You want it to be very uh, nondescript above the, above the space. So when we do have lower ceiling heights, um, and we're using a T-bar ceiling application, we can use a product like this. And this is, this is a LED source and this is, it's two by two, so it would fit into a grid ceiling similar to this. We, we have two by two and two by four. And if you notice, the functionality of this fixture is to get lighting high up the wall, but not, and also get nice even illumination down and produce a nice soft light out, output. So, I mean, this fixture is basically lighting that whole area over there. It does a very even job of illuminating uh, a large area of space and it does it so that when you walk into the room and these these types of fixtures are mounted in the ceiling what you your eye does not do is it doesn't go right up to the ceiling and see brightness on the ceiling it's very subtle and does what it's supposed to do which is light the space so there's 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 an angle when you when you walk like when these are turned on you walk into the space What's the first thing your eye does? It sees the, these types of light fixtures because there's, all they're doing is producing a lot of light out of it. There's no control or not much control of glare out of the fixture. Newer products like this are designed to be low glare and very uniform or energy efficient and what we call volumetrically light the space. So it lights it from floor to ceiling, wall to wall, with even illumination. And lastly, we talked about uh, wall grazing or cove lighting. And so this is an LED source. And you know, Ann showed a couple applications where there was a cove and she was just lighting the wall and the wall had a certain texture to it. And if we would have hit it from you know, two feet away and shined on it, it probably wouldn't give it the depth or the shadows that it needed for that texture to stand out. So we call it wall, we do wall grazing and that's when you take a product that has a very narrow angle of light out of it. So you can, you can see that, I mean, we, we, there's actually product that's much narrower than this, but this angle here is very narrow. So when we put it up against the wall, it does a nice job of just washing it with, with a linear source. We used to do this a lot with fluorescence, uh, but the problem that we have with fluorescence is that the ends of the lamps would darken over time. So if you had fluorescence lined up and they were in a row and you walked, you walked, on, uh, you walked up to the project for the first day, it would look really nice because it was nice, even illumination. But over a course of time, as the lamps blacken on the end of it, you start to get this shadow in between the light sources. 
and that is represented on your wall in front of you and so it becomes a very it becomes a distraction because it's not as evenly lit as an LED source would do. Does that make sense? We can also use those products for cove lighting. So if we wanted to put them in a cove and shine them into the space, onto the ceiling, um, and, and keep that nice, even, plain, clean ceiling application, we, could, we can do it with a product like this as well. Don't people use like rope lights for something like that too? Sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, rope. Uh, well, originally they were halogen. Anytime you're going to ask me what kind of light it is, I'm going to tell you it's LED these days because uh, just about everything, like I said, is, is, is going LED. Uh, the thing about rope lighting is that um, the amount of light that comes out of a rope light is more to probably just tell you that there's a cove there and not necessarily produce a function of light, which, you know, either, either application is right. It just depends on how you want to do it. Uh, you know, a rope light is, is, is just there to accent the cove. A product like this is there to give you some performance, some horsepower to light the space as well. Okay, so low voltage lighting. Uh, in, in, in light fixtures, we use um, different things to f turn on the lamp, right? So in a fluorescent fixture, we use a ballast. In an LED fixture, we use a driver. In a low voltage fixture, we use a transformer. Does everybody know what a transformer does? So it takes 120 volts and it drops it down to 12 volts and it fires a lamp like this. So this is a 12 volt lamp and we use a transformer inside the fixture to give you the power needed to produce this light. The lamp source two needs to be a low voltage lamp source. So this is a low voltage lamp and it has a special pin that you use to plug into a socket that is a low voltage socket because we don't want to be able to put in a pin that is line voltage or we don't want to be able to plug this into a 120 volt lamp or source because it will obviously explode. So with these, remember we can get different distributions out of it, right? So we could use it for general illumination. So we use low voltage lights for landscape lighting that's a very popular application for it before LED. Uh, we use them for downlights. You see these in downlights. You remember that photo that Ann was showing you of the track that it was suspended by cable? It was kind of in that room that had an A-frame. Uh, so we, those cables are actually energized and those are low voltage conductors as well. So you can put your hand on it and touch it, it's very safe. Uh, and then use uh, a low voltage lamp source to go with. Yeah, watch out for the snake pit. <laughs> so the reason why you have low voltage lighting is that there was a low voltage application. And the reason why you have a low voltage application is because you don't have a wire and a plug. So anything running off a battery is low voltage by definition. These, you know, the earlier version of these things came off of miner's caps. They ran off batteries, 12 mm -hmm. volts. Anything you can plug into your car, 12 volts. Those little festoon lamps or, you know, like rope light kind of little things, first came out of a car. A car can only run off of 12 or 24 volts. The MR16, GE invented this for a slide projector. Mm -hmm. And they needed uh, low voltage. What low voltage does is allows you to have a smaller filament. The filament is the thing that actually makes the light. The smaller the filament and the larger reflector you have, allows you to produce a narrower beam of light. Narrow means, it's what he's been talking about, the spot versus a flood. You take the same reflector and you make a bigger filament. I can't do this anymore because it's all going to start going much floodier. So if I want a really narrow spot, like a 10 degree, something that has literally a beam spread of about that big, I need low voltage. Line voltage does not know how to do that. And uh, LEDs have something similar to a transformer, but it's called a driver. And we can produce very similar light that we can with a, 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 a halogen source. So that kind of 
ties us into this product here. A lot of these, the, the next few products I'm going to show are, um, they're basically product that, that you would accent or, um, you know, wall sconces, the, the bathroom applications, the, the entry lobby areas. Um, and these are, you know, in, in the past we would have these in a, in a restroom or uh, a, down a corridor and we would be using 20 watts of light per fixture and this particular fixture produces about 6 watts of light out of it. So it's a very energy efficient source. It has a nice even uniform illumination on the glass. The color temperature is a very cool color temperature, right? So would we use this in a space where there's a lot of warm finishes? Probably not. It would, it would stick out like, like a sore thumb. So, uh, and then back here is our driver. This is the, we, all LED fixtures are going to have something like this uh, as part of it. We have to uh, make sure we, we size the drivers appropriately to, to the LED light source. This is another uh, LED pendant. So this is, uh, it's kind of a neat fixture. It's, you know, you would suspend it over uh, in a restaurant, uh, over a dining room table, over a uh, lobby area. And it, it produces, um, again, it's about six watts of, of LED light output. It's not going to be a fixture that you do general illumination with, but if you use it appropriately, uh, you, can, you can certainly do a nice job of illuminating a space with it. <laughs> well, uh, my, my father started our agency. So uh, before I started with the agency, I worked uh, for a lighting manufacturer, Lithonia Lighting. Uh, and I went through their marketing training program. And um, for the first year, what they had us do is go through different product groups within the company. And at the, co at the time, uh, Lithonia Lighting was, was the largest manufacturer in North America. And they had probably seven different product groups at the time. And uh, we, we spent uh, about three months in each product group learning about uh, I learned about lighting controls, uh, I learned about uh, outdoor lighting, uh, and I learned about downlighting. They had a specific division for downlighting, and so uh, I spent about a year in each one of those product groups uh, learning about their products. And then uh, parallel to that, uh, we, we uh, did some, uh, the IES has um, certain uh, educational programs that they do, uh, you know, for basic lighting. Uh, IES is uh, it's the Illuminating Engineering Society. So we really don't have a governing body of, of you know, if we were going to light a space and, and you had to light it to a certain foot candle level, uh, the IES is a handbook that we use uh, as recommendations for the, the level of light that you want to light. And then they also provide educational. So if I was going to do a parking structure, for instance, they have... Um, they have uh, documents that will tell you how to properly light specific applications, parking structures. Like so, so we went through different training, course trainings through uh, the IES, uh, provided by the IES. So that was how I got uh, most of the training. And then as I got into the field, it was just, uh, you know, learn as you go, learn as you go exactly. So. Um, and then this, this product uh, is, is similar light output to the, uh, wall sconce that I was showing you, but it has uh, a little more of a warm color temperature to it. And so the point of showing you some of this product is, is to let you know that, that, you know, sources like this that we used to do halogen uh, or very warm or very uh, high energy uh, sources, we can now do with low energy and still get very good light output from them. Uh, Eureka. And just if, if anybody wants to know relative cost of this product, right, everybody thinks, well, how much is all of this stuff? So this product probably retails out for um, $180 uh, retail cost. Uh, a product like this, which um, if you don't mind me plugging it in that, the residential project that Ann was showing, uh, it, the first couple of photos was uh, done with this product line. The nice thing about this product line is that it had all the different color temperatures, but in the state of California, we are so restricted by how much wattage we use not only in a house but in a commercial application 
This product meets uh, what we call Title 24. And Title 24, if, if you're not familiar with it, basically governs how much wattage uh, you can use in certain spaces uh, in our state. So if you were doing an office building, uh, you know, a lot of those applications I was like sa salivating at because we never get the opportunity to put that much light into a space here in California because we are so restricted by how much energy we use. So the state of California governs that. This particular product meets the requirement for the state of California as far as how much energy it consumes to how much light it produces. In it. What, I, what we talked about earlier, the efficacy ratings of it. So, um, and that by the way, is going to continue to get tighter and tighter uh, as we all move ahead in this world. The LED is great, but what they're going to tell us is that, you know, in the past where we could light an office for to 1.2 watts per square foot, it's now going to be, you know, 0.8 watts per square foot because they know there's product like this out there that is going to really uh, tighten us down from, from a... Um, uh, energy standpoint. Um, one last one I wanted to show you. Uh, task lighting. Ann talked about, uh, you know, uh, a, a desk and uh, doing some type of task lighting with either a table lamp or a uh, different type of light source that's LED. And so you could do it very easily with uh, a product like this. And I'm going to show you, you know, th this product is kind of cool because you can you can tilt it and adjust it, and it has a nice wide angle of light coming out of it. And then we also do it, there's the cool color temperature side of it. So um, you can also use it as a wall washer. Uh, under you know, toe kick areas, different applications. So point is, is that we're going to have you know a lot of light sources that that we come across and if your mind is thinking how can I light this space in a creative way that's another thing that we can do for you is go out find the light source that's going to work best for your application uh, and you know always always get samples of the product if it's a very specific uh, application and it's a high visual area it's a critical area uh, look at samples of product it makes a huge difference there's a thousand different manufacturers that make product like this, but until you feel and touch and demo the product, you're not going to know what it's going to be like until you get into the field. And if you have a situation, what, what, what Ann didn't show you is the hours of time that it took to aim all those products in those applications. They don't just install them and, and look, that, look that great right after the contractor installs them. There's, there's a lot of time afterward that lighting designers or interior designers have to go and aim and give you the perfect level of light. And in a product like this or other products, you want to make sure that it's a user-friendly type uh, product. You don't want it to get out into the field and not be able to aim it the way you want to aim it or tune it the way you want to tune it. So, okay. I think that's it. All right. Thank you. Thank you.